Yo guys, what's up? It's Dr. Paul Thomas with Startup DPC, and I'm hanging at home right now, but I got these questions I want to get to. I don't want to wait till tomorrow when I'm back in the office. So question number one, how did your decision to pursue DPC work affect your student loan repayment strategy? So I graduated with $170,000 in student loans. Um, that was in 2013. That was the average debt load. I think this year, 2019, or you know, it's now 2020, but in 2019, the average st student loan debt load was $190,000. It's a lot of money. And that's usually at that 6.9% interest rate, which is insane. Anyways, when I graduated with 170, I decided that I would do a straight 10 year p repayment program. And what I did was I started paying $2,000 a month, every month um, upon graduation. Basically I started paying in November and I actually made my last payment in October of 2019. So it took me about six years to pay it off. And at no point in that entire period was I making over $100,000. So I was making less than $100,000. I was able to just live pretty frugally and um, reinvest any ex extra earnings into my business to grow my business. And that's how I paid them off. Um, I just had a really clear priority that it was really important for me to pay it off in like five to seven years. And that's what I did. Um, so it didn't affect my strategy to pursue direct primary care because I knew that's what I was going to do. I couldn't see myself practicing the fee for service system at all. And I knew that if I wanted to have a career in medicine, it would have to be in direct primary care because there was no way I was going to see 24 to 30 patients a day. And also, I really believe in the work that I do every day. It's empowering. I get up ready to go to work every day. I'm pretty excited about it. And I didn't feel that way about the fee-for-service system. All right, question number two. As residents, we're mostly responsible for our patients. We connect with some of them, but don't know how to engage them while they wait for us to complete residency. What was your strategy? So basically, my strategy was to uh, connect with people in the community that are starting my practice and connect with people in many different ways. So, you know, that, that really gets down to personal branding. How do you build a personal brand? And I actually go into depth on this in one of my courses on our website. It's at startupdpc.com slash take action. And you can take one of those courses on how to attract new patients to your direct primary care practice. So I recommend that you really build a strong personal brand on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, one or all of those channels, and you can really attract people to your business and your brand that way. Question number three, practice finance is a big issue. Didn't working multiple jobs interfere with your time commitment to your private practice patients? And no, it did not. I basically worked two days a week in, during the first year of my DPC practice. I worked 12 hour shift during the week, like on a Tuesday or something. And then I worked an eight hour shift on the Saturday or Sunday. And so I was working 20 hours a week at the urgent care. I earned $70, $80 an hour or something like that. I can't remember now. But that was enough to bring in like five or $6,000 a month, which covered my expenses, my student loan expenses. And then I was able to spend the rest of my week, like Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or whatever it was, at my direct primary care practice. And because I had so few patients at that time, you know, I was, didn't at my the end of my first year, I think it was around 125, 150 patients. So it wasn't that many patients. I could fit them all in in a four-day work week really easily, and it really didn't. Inter inter it did not interfere with me starting and growing my direct primary care practice. So thank you so much for these questions. I think they're amazing. Keep them coming. I'm Dr. Paul Thomas at Plum Health DPC, and um, I started this thing called Startup DPC where I help doctors start and grow their direct primary care practices. And if you love this video, give it a like. If you like the channel, give us a follow. If you want more of this kind of contact, content, it's at startupdpc.com. And if you really wanna take a deep dive on starting and growing your practice, take one of our courses on our Take Action page. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful night and enjoy your leap day, uh, February 29th. All right, take care, everybody. See ya.